Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to another episode of Win Tuition. I'm CJ and today we're bringing you his Royal Moistness Glarb. Uh, this is a deck I've been brewing for quite some time, about a week now, and I am really excited to bring this deck tech to you. Uh, the premise of this deck is just a good salt tie list and it's pretty sweet. So I'm going to go over all the cards and then I am going to kind of give you some of the combos as we go along as I introduce the cards. Uh, on along the way and we'll go over the final kind of flashy uh, win condition at the end so let's get right into it so let's start off with our commander which is glarb calamities auger it is a black green and blue frog wizard noble it is de has death touch and it has you may look at the top card of your library anytime which is really nice because you can kind of see what you're going to be like going drawing into the following turn um, or into heuristics um, it says you may play land cards and cast spells with mana value four or greater from the top of your library and then it has an activated ability of tap to surveil two and it is a two four body with that on top of everything so it's a really solid card let's get into the deck all right so we have a total of 19 creatures in our deck list uh, i have a good kind of little bit of creature ramp and then i have a lot of artifact ramp as well um, we do want to be able to cast our four or greater spells so i would say about half of them have an alternative casting cost so we don't have to worry about paying uh, into those big spells but there are some that we still need to do but starting off with just our, our creatures we have dolphy voidwalker again a great stacks piece for graveyard hate against our opponents who are on breach decks that we don't have access to we can also snag a breach out of the graveyard which is really nice um, we got death rate shaman died at halfling which makes a lot of our legendary creatures that we have in the deck which well, i should say a few legendary creatures we have as well as our commander uncounterable uh, we have elvish spirit guy for that little bit of green mana that we need sometimes to just get there we have the european swallow which again i love the money python stuff that just came out i know it sold out super quickly uh, but really cool stuff i really wish they would have did a commander deck around the whole thing and maybe included some new cards because I think that was an opportunity missed. Uh, we have Flesh Duplicate. Uh, Manglehorn I threw in there because it's a good stacks piece. It's just going to hurt our opponents and kind of slow them down since again we don't have access to Dockside. This will hopefully slow them down enough to where we can able to pop off and get a win. It also is just good removal in the sense that you know we do have some creatures with activated abilities. One of them being our commander. So it is kind of helpful to like remove a cursed totem or another pesky artifact on board. Um, I included Notion Thief uh, because it is a four cost card and it can play it off the top with Glarb. Uh, and it has Flash and it's just one of the, it's just a, I just really like this card in general uh, because it is an I gotcha card. And I know sometimes it feels bad to play an I gotcha card where you have to hold up, you know, four mana. Uh, but it's just a good card and, and I think it should see play even though we're in a Bowmaster's meta. There's so many cards being drawn. It's almost like a soft stacks piece. We got Opposition Agent. We got Orcish Bowmasters. Metamorph, which is another card we can play off the top with Glarb. Polywog Prodigy. This card is just straight gas. I think this is the best card from the Bloomborough uh, set because it's just going to draw you so many cards. So, you know, it is a frog, so it's on theme. But then you go Polywog into our commander into like a Shieldred or Italian. It's going to have uh, a three five body which means you're going to be drawing off of every two or less non-creature spell it's just so strong um, we have shieldred again it's a nice attrition piece um, i really think you know in the meta that we're in i think she has a spot right now uh since we're in a heavy rhystic you know draw go meta in the sense you know everyone's just kind of sitting back on a rhystic study or a mystic remora or even a one ring so again it acts as that you know stacks piece that we want it is, I would say, probably better than an Ocean Thief because it has a bigger butt than Ocean Thief does and it's easier, easily removed, um, but still a good card. Uh, six, I threw in there. We're not totally on the recursion, like, reanimation strategy. Um, there's no Yawgmoth Swill in here. There's no um, kind of reanimation package, per se, besides six. So I just like it because it's versatile and it's just a good body. It's a 2-4 with reach. Um... So I included it because I just, I really like retrace as a mechanic. Um, I don't know if it fits, but 
think it has potential. I know it's seeing play in some of the decks like Corvold and things like that, so we'll see. I think I'm gonna need some more testing for it, but overall, I think it's a solid pick. Uh, we got Spells here to pick out a couple of our combos uh, that we need for the other half of our combo pieces. We got Talion, just another good four drop um, Demir card that goes in any kind of blue black X build. Thoracle, so we obviously know we're on Thassa's Oracle and Console or Thassa's Oracle Tainted Pact as one of our main win conditions. Um, Valley Floodcaller, I will say, I'm on the fence about it. I, I don't know if I want to switch between a Valley Floodcaller or the Final Word Phantom that came out of uh, Merge at Carlisle Manor because while Valley Floodcaller says non creature spells have flash, which is great, don't get me wrong, and at any time, Final Word Phantom, I feel like, is a little more useful because even though it's at end of turn, I can cast anything. So we could cast things like Shieldred or Notion Thief at the end of a turn. So there is pros and cons to both. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think deserves to be in the list or just does it to be maybe cut out at all together. So let me know. And then we have Wither Bloom Apprentice. Again, another two card combo with Chain of Small, which you're going to be seeing in our sorcery package. Um, but before I get into our sorcery package, I do want to take this time to thank the sponsor of the video, TOA or TOA Magic as they're known. They're the purple booth at Magic Cons and SCG Cons across the US. Toa, thank you for your support. We really appreciate you. And if you guys want to help support this channel, you can do that uh, by going to toamagic.com and using our affiliate code WINTUITION at checkout the next time you're looking for singles or seal product. They have over 77,000 SKUs on their website, and I'm sure they're going to have something you're looking for. They ship all in one package straight to you, which is really nice. So make sure you guys check them out. And if you're not looking for magic cards or a seal product, that's okay. A simple like and subscribe really helps as well. And we really appreciate all the support you have given us so far. And that's for our viewers and subscribers. So thank you guys. We really appreciate you. Now let's get back to the deck tech. So moving on to our sorceries. Again, we have Chain of Smog, which is tutorable with Spellseeker, which is really nice. And it's also going to, Spellseeker will be able to also fetch up our another uh, instant spell that's in the instant package in just a couple minutes we'll go over. But uh, next we have Calling Ritual, just a solid board wipe. Uh, we can play this and then play a Glarb or into, you know, a Talion or a Shieldred and kind of just sit back after we play that, which is really nice. We got Demonic Tutor. We do have a Doomsday line, which was kind of really drew me to the deck. Um, it's really like kind of a nice, clean Doomsday line. It's more flashy for sure, um, but definitely a solid line to take in the deck if we want to. And I'll go over the complete line of that in, at the end uh, after I go through all the cards. So stay tuned for that. Next, we have Eldritch Evolution. So again, we can go into our smaller creatures, like our Halfling or our Duplicate, into a Shieldred, into a Six, into a, a Manglehorn. Um, I'm not sure if I want to keep it in the list, because again, all of our creatures are very good. Um, I will say, we, you know, probably a lot of times we're going to go into that Witherbloom Apprentice or our Spellseeker line if we're trying to get there. Um, but again, it's just kind of one of those things where I'm like on the fence about. Um, Finale of Devastation, just a good card in general, gets us things back from the grave and whatnot since we can surveil things into the yard. Um, Get Probe is one of those cards where I like it because it helps with our potentially our Doomsday line, but at the same time, it's kind of just a, a cantrip. Um, so it helps us, you know, get the top card off, you know, if we've already activated our surveil ability and we want to see one card deeper. Um, most likely going to probably be cut here um, after I do some more testing and some test hands. Um, Meme Bat or Pneumonic Betrayal, just another good end of the kind of end game finisher. Uh, again, like as the game progresses, the yards get full and just being able to win off your opponent's cards, it's just very strong. It's one of my favorite cards because again, I like to play my opponent's cards versus my own. So, and then Toxic Deluge. Um, another card I'm thinking about swapping this out for is Nuclear Fallout. Um, where it's the Black Black X from the Fallout uh, set that gives rad counters to opponents and then they mill, uh, mill based on the rad counters. So my only kind of drawback with that is, yes, we're filling our yard, but we're, since we're not on a super heavy reanimation package, I feel like it's not necessary, so I went with the Toxic Deluge. All right, instants. Again, we're really running a standard instant package here. Nothing too out of the ordinary, it's par from one card. Uh, we have your standard removal like Abrupt Decay and Assassin's Trophy. We have your soft removal like Chain of Vapor and Cyclonic Rift. You have your little bursts of ramps like Dark Ritual. I did not include Calling Ritual because 
you know, we're not trying to get to a high amount of mana like to cast a peer into the abyss or an ad nauseum. So I, t I actually got rid of that. So I just kept the dark ritual in again for that little burst of mana to even you know, get into a shieldred, get into a one ring, get into a Talion early in the game. We got de de demonic consultation. Again, we're playing Thorkel. It's a, it's a no brainer. Um, here's our second piece for that spell seeker line is uh, Duranic Rehearsal. Uh, because of our commander being able to surveil, we can kind of see what's on top and stop at any time once we've generated enough mana. Then cast the spell that we want and continue the chain, which is really cool. Um, as long as it is four or greater. So again, um, Fierce Guardianship, again, standard counter package, uh, Foster Storm, Force of Negation, Force of Will, Mental Misstep, Mind Break Trap, Pact of Negation, uh, the new card from Modern Horizon 3, Strict Serenade. We got Swan Song and then Veil of Summer um, as some more protection. I did skip over Mana Drain because I don't really know if I want to include this in the list. Now, while I love getting a lot of mana off of this Mana Drain, you know, I do play Tivit and being able to cast a Mana Drain and then cast a Tivit the following turn, it feels really good. Um, but since our commander is one of each colored pip and no additional generic mana, and yes, we're playing some higher cost cards in the four slots, but like, I don't know if it's necessary. I kind of maybe want to switch this to a delay. So let me know if you guys think I should switch to a delay or a mana drain in the comments below. I'm just kind of curious what your feedback is on that. Um, and just some other standard stuff. Worldly Tutor, Vampiric Tutor, Mystical Tutor, Tainted Pack. You know, all staples of CDH at this point. Uh, and then we are on Born Upon the Wind. You know, being able to just pop off any time over our opponents is very strong. Um, one include you're going to see here is Gush. And I'll get to that in a little bit because that is part of our Doomsday line. Moving on to the artifacts, we are on 13. Um, most of them being artifact ramp. So we got the Arcane Signet, Chrome Mox, Felwar Stone. We have the Iso Scepter as part of our combo line, the Jeweled Lotus. And I will say I'm as much as, you know, it's probably like, why are you playing Jeweled Lotus in this deck? Because our commander, you know, is one of each color. It's your only cracking it for one mana while it is nice in that sense like it's if it gets removed for whatever reason a board wipe a wrath you know targeted removal it helps us pay for that commander tax the following time we cast it and sometimes we just want to get that extra burst of mana whether it be that one pip to get out our commander out sooner so we can initiate our plan um we got lotus petal mana crypt mana vault mox diamond soul ring talisman of curiosity since we are on more of the bluer stuff I may switch this to the Talisman of Dominance, which is the blue-black, um, but I'm not sure. Um, and we got the One Ring, obviously one of the best draw engines, or one of three draw engines in CDH, and then Wishclaw Talisman as our artifacts. So again, standard standard uh, artifact package for CDH, par from like an ISO Scepter, it's not in every build, but as far as the ramp package, pretty straightforward. Then we got four enchantments, so we got the usual suspects of Mystic Remora and Ristic Study. And then Carpet of Flavors, again, just getting more of those colored pips, super, super helpful um, in the early game. And then Counterbalance. I, well, this is one of my favorite cards, and I had to include it in the deck. And it only, another reason I include it in the deck is because of Glarb's activated ability. You know, if we're in that tight spot where, you know, we want to surveil and kind of filter the top two cards, almost like a, like a dividing top counterbalance combo, we're able to and hopefully stop our opponent. Again, if we whiff, we whiff. Um, but there's just some nice, you know, synergy there that I felt like it's good because, again, sometimes counterbalance is just OP and sometimes counterbalance is mid. And in all my instances, I haven't had a bad counterbalance. So, uh, yeah, that's just my take on counterbalance my favorite card so not cutting it <laughs> next we're moving on to the lands 29 land count we want to be on the higher end again our, a lot of our you know our good a decent amount of stuff is for cost uh with some of that being alternative casting costs and stuff um and i forgot to mention that one thing that's really cool about glarb is you you can actually pay the alternative casting cost of the spell if it has one as long as it's a four cost card or greater um, so like things like force of will, things like, um, subtlety can be played off the top massacre, all can be played off the top with Glarb. 
without having to pay the mana cost just using the alternative cast cards, which is also really cool about this commander. But anyway, moving on to the lands, we got 29. We got Ancient Tomb, Bayou, Bloodstained Mire, Besage you for removing those pesky artifacts, Breeding Pool, Cavern of Souls, City of Brass. Uh, what's really cool about Cavern of Souls, real quick, before I move on to the uh, other lands, is there is some synergy here because um, with Glarb, he is a Frog Wizard Noble. We also have another Noble in our deck, and that is actually going to be our Talion. So we can actually make Talion uncounterable if we so chose, uh, which I thought was really a cool kind of little synergy there. Um, again, that's really the only synergy you're going to do. You could also choose Wizard. There are a few Wizards, so you can make your you know your Spellseeker uncounterable, your Thassa's Oracle uncounterable. So again, there's again more synergy there depending on what time of the game you draw the Cavern of Souls. So there is some cool synergy there in that sense. And then we got, you know, Command Tower, Exotic Orchard, Flooded Strand, Gemstone. I have a couple basics in here. Um, again, since, you know, it's nice to have a couple basics, I might swap them out for um, a couple different types of lands, like the Pain Lands, but we'll see when the time comes. Uh, Mana Confluence, Marsh Flats, Misty Rainforest, Morphic Pool, Ottawara, Overgrown Tomb, Polluted Delta, Rejuvenating Springs, Tarn, Shifting Woodland. Now that's a new land out of Modern Horizons 3. Um, I haven't seen it yet in a in a test hand or anything like that, but you know, this has the potential to turn into um, a removed Wither Room Apprentice, a you know, something that has a static ability, a shielder if someone tries to go off with a wheel, uh, because it is not sorcery speed, which is really nice. So sweet. Um, we got Swamp, we got Takanuma, we got uh, Tropical Island, we got Underground Sea, Undergrowth Stadium, Verdant Catacombs, and Watery Grave. Um, so, that's all the cards in the deck. Um, I will say I didn't lean towards a, a heavy reanimation strategy. Um, I just wanted to go for a good Soul Time midrange list. I think you could lean into that reanimation strategy a little heavy if you wanted to, being our Glarb does have the surveillability attached to him. Um, I don't think it's necessarily the strongest, but I definitely think you could build a nice solid list. Um, I just prefer more of a, a, you know, a salty good stuff list. Um, so let's go back to our Doomsday line. So Doomsday is very interesting because of Glarb's ability, right? So our Doomsday line with Glarb consists of, again, five cards in any Doomsday pile. But... Ours is going to be very specific. So the first card we're going to put on top of a Doomsday Pile is Gush. So you're going to have Gush at the top of your, your stack, of your deck. And now what that allows us to do, again, you need some prerequisites. You need just two blue mana. So two islands specifically so you can pay the alternative casting cost of Gush. So you float two mana, cast Gush off the top of your library with Glarb. That allows you to draw two cards. The two cards you're going to want to stack underneath Gush is a free piece of interaction, a force of negation or a pact of negation, and that's his oracle. Then you'll draw those two cards, leaving two cards on the top of your deck. The last two cards in your deck, force of will and mind break trap. So that way you have more free interaction to protect your thoracle while you're trying to go off. Now, granted, you will need a blue card other than Thassa's oracle in your hand, and other than you know your other card you drew, fierce guardianship or uh, Pact of Negation to pitch to the Force of Will. If needed, then you'll have the Mind Break Trap to back it up. So there is that. So it, again, it is more of a, you know, a, a flashy, you know, show-offy kind of, you know, win condition. Um, but it's really cool because Glarb is able to give you more protection off the top of your deck, which is really cool. So that's kind of the flashy way to win. But again, your other win cons, Thassa's Oracle, Demonic Consultation, Withered Boom Apprentice, and Chain of Smog, and then we have the Scepter combo. Um, I could see, again, I know like I didn't build it that way, but you could probably go for a reanimation type deck in the sense that you could reanimate larger things, again, filling the yard with Glarb, Maybe using some untappers to untap Glarb to surveil more, um, what have you. But I think this is a solid build. Um, let me know in the comments below what you guys think on Glarb, Calamity's Augur. I think he's a really cool, viable CEDH commander. Again, not the best, but definitely a fun deck to bring uh, to a local CEDH event. 
or something along those lines. He may even see, you know, one in the top 16 here and there. But overall, I think it's a solid le uh, solid list, and I think it's going to be it's very it's been very enjoyable to play. I will tell you that. I'm um, having a lot of fun playing this list. It's a very fun commander, and yeah. So that is the deck tech for today. I know it's pretty quick, but again, I'm trying to keep this video a little short and sweet. That way you guys can go see for yourself. Feel free to test out some test hands, get a feel for it, and let us know what you think. That's going to wrap up today's deck tech video. I'm CJ of Win Tuition. We'll see you next time.